Threading the serger is one of the most commonly asked questions. We're going to take you step by step and in which order you need to do it. Today we have threads of yellow, red, green, and blue. That way you can see where all the threads come out once we get the serger going. So first thing you want to do is start with the upper looper. That is the green thread. So I always say thread from the inside out of this little stand. So we're going from the center to the right and the center to the left. So these two are needles. This is an upper looper and this is a lower looper. So first thing you want to do is just take them up and over these little uh, guides at the top. Make sure they go nice and smooth. Don't get wrapped around. And then what you're going to do is come underneath this back part, this little hook back there, and then just come underneath the pretensioner. I have not found that one side's better than the other, so just pick a side and go down. Now you want to make sure that you have the presser foot up because that way the tension discs are open. Sometimes I'll lower the presser foot during my threading. Maybe it'll make it a little easier to do the needles, but just make sure that you always lift it back up when you go to start your next thread. So we're coming straight down and sometimes what I'll do is hold this thread and make sure it goes right down into the tension disc. I have had people find somehow they get the thread kind of on the outside of the disc in here. So if you ever have trouble, can't figure it out, honestly, just re-thread the serger. It usually fixes it. So just make sure you go right down the channel. And now we're following all the green dials. Tweezers are gonna be a friend. Here's a little picture to remind us what order we're threading the serger in. Start with one, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna follow the guides that are marked with the green. This one isn't really marked, but we are gonna go ahead and go behind it, right below where the tension is. Come over to the green one here. One thing nice I like about these tensions is they're all open. So if you miss one, you can always go back and slip it in. So down here, there's one, two, two green ones down here, and then we're gonna come up to this little curly cue here. So sometimes I need a little extra help to kind of get that down in that bottom one. Just go ahead and slip that right on in there. And then up through this one. That second one down here is labeled for both blue and green, and yes, they will share that particular guide. Then go right behind this one here. Now this is the upper looper, and upper loopers, and or I should say both loopers, have a very large eye. But here's what I do is I put my tw my thread in my hand, and I want the tweezers to grip the tip, so it's almost like the tip and the thread are all at the same direction. Makes it very easy to poke it through and catch it on the other side. And sometimes I need to catch it quicker and not let go. There we go, all right, push it through. So those should be fairly easy to thread. When I go to pull this extra loop out, just make sure it's not catching on any of the other little guys here and it goes straight up to that upper looper. So that's one thread. Next, I'm just gonna go back. We're repeating the same thing up above for the tension. My presser foot is still up. I'm coming straight down. Here we are. Here's that guide right below. This is the lower looper. So we're doing the lighter blue. You're gonna notice there's light blue and a dark blue. The dark blue is for the cover stitch looper, which is the one way in front here. We are not using that one. We're using the one closest to the upper looper or closest to the two needles that we're doing. But we will do videos on the cover stitch. So another light blue is down here. So one of the things, you know, people always say, why is there so many guides? Well, the engineers did not put these here to frustrate you. There's a reason that this guide is right here and this one is right here. It's how the serger works. So if you miss one, sometimes things don't work out. So I always come back, double check my path, make sure I'm not hooked around or looped around kind of sideways or twice. That really makes a difference. So what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom you in because this is where the thread is going to dis disappear into the back of the lower looper. Now that we're very zoomed in, we can see that there's one more guide right under here that we need to get. Now this is the lower looper. This point here has an eye in it. You can kind of see the two kind of crisscross themselves. So I kind of line them up so they're almost even. We're gonna start by actually putting the thread through the eye of the lower looper. Now this is why we thread the upper looper first because it kind of just puts this thread over the top. Now before we pull this all the way out, or all the way through, there is one place we must thread. So I'm gonna just pull a little extra thread out, and this lever right here, you lift it with your finger, has a little kind of V shape. And what we wanna do is put this thread in that V shape and push it all the way to the back. Now the way you know you do the, did this right is see in this lower looper, there's a groove. The thread needs to lay in that groove 
before it goes out the eye of the lower looper. That way you know it is fine. Now the threads can kind of go anywhere. They can come across the foot, they can go out the back, whatever you feel you'd like to do. It really doesn't matter. Once that first stitch gets taken, it's ready to go. That was the hardest part of the serger. So we're gonna zoom back out and then we're gonna do the needles. Needles are just about as easy as a sewing machine. So do the same part at the top. We still have our presser foot up. We're coming behind this little guide at the top and straight down. But this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come across just under the silver bar. There's three little grooves. It really doesn't matter which one. We'll just pick one. And then have it go up and in this little mouth. Once you're here, just pick a groove to come down in. And then there's kind of two guides at the top of the needle. We're just gonna slip them behind. They also have little grooves, so just pick one to go in and then right back over here. Now you do have a needle threader in the accessory box. Let me show you how this works. It actually is a great time saver. So the needle threader, first off, I am gonna lower that presser foot, but remember, lower that back, or bring it back up, prior to um, threading that second needle. So on the needle threader, there's a little notch. You do have to have the notch on the top side. There's one on both edges, so either side. Notch is up, you're gonna take the thread and lay it sideways in the mouth but just lay it in there. Then go ahead and put the needle threader on the needle. There's a little plunger and as you push in, it's gonna go into the groove and as you slide down, it'll push it all the way in and produce a little loop on the back side. There we go. And then sometimes I'll use my tweezers just to pull that one right on through. Again, threads can go anywhere you want. We're putting our presser foot back up and we're repeating that exact same process as we work from the right needle and now the left needle. So we're just gonna pick a different groove here. Doesn't, again, doesn't really matter. Little, but it does go in the same mouth area here. Little groove, little groove behind. Super easy. You know, so many times people say, oh, I can't figure out my surgery. I'm like, just re-thread it. It really will solve you so many issues that you won't even, that will kind of just be fixed by having the threads kind of reset by you. Do this a couple times. It's never any trouble once you have just some of the basics. I would prefer to actually unthread a surgery than try to fix a serger, like when people bring it in, they're like, I can't get my serger working. So here we have, we do want to close up the door. If you don't do the door close, well, it actually doesn't sew. Here, I'll step on the foot control. See, nothing. So uh, it has that safety little catch. So once you go ahead and put that in. Now, a little trick for serging and starting to serge, always fold your fabric in half. And if you actually get in the habit of always serging off the fold, you'll always be able to open it and test it. So I'm always reaching for the fold. Now you can go ahead and just put the fabric right up to the foot, it'll take it in. But on occasion during my classes, this is only for classes and sometimes this might help for you, lift up the presser foot, slide your fabric in just like you would a sewing machine, lower the presser foot down, those needles will come into fabric first. Like I said, you don't have to, but sometimes I like to just do that because I know instantly that everything is going to get together correctly. Now we're gonna explain why we threaded those needles last. It's one of the most important things about knowing things about your serger and it will solve so many problems. So we're just gonna go ahead, serge right along here. Now that the chain is connected, we can go ahead and bring it around and use the thread cutter as we were. So I do see that I didn't get one of my threads in the, I'm thinking my blue one's really loose. So I'm gonna check here, make sure that it got in all the way and I don't think it did. We'll fix that and then we'll show you what a perfect seam actually looks like. After a quick check, I noticed that my stitch selection knob was not on A. It was actually kind of beyond A, it was like in between. So that meant I actually had no tension on some of my pieces here. So I'm gonna make sure that that is actually at A, right on that dot, and then we're gonna test it one more time. Now if you keep cutting off the piece that you just surged, you can get the most use out of your fabric and really make a nice sample here. Just pull the thread as you come out the back side, turn it and cut with the knife. Now here's what it's gonna look like. This is what you want. First off, we have yellow and red, or hot pink today, as our needles. They look like regular sewing stitches. Our lime green, or our green one, is actually going back and forth. That's our upper looper. And then on the back side, our blue is our lower looper, and he's going back and forth here. Here's what you wanna look at. See this blue line that goes nice and straight? 
If that line is straight, your serger is set up correctly. So I always turn the fabric over. The proof is on the back side. With that straight line, I'm also looking for two other things. I'm noticing that I have a little tiny dot or tick mark of the yellow and the red. And that also is perfect tensions for my needles and my two loopers meet right along the edge. Isn't that a pretty stitch? That is your four thread construction seam ready to go. It will stretch if you use fabric that it has give like fleece or knit and yet it is stable for the fabrics that are woven. So this is the, what your, your stitch is going to be used for most of the time. It's mostly what my serger is set up for but we're going to go through all the stitches that you can do from A all the way around and into cover stitch.